Hello humanoids, welcome to Halfling Hobbies. I'm Halfling Hannah, and today we're gonna talk about something I am super excited about. We are going to look at my top five favorite tools for DMs. Now these are tools specifically for my table that I actually use all the time, that I love, that have saved me a ton of time, money, and sanity. And who guys are gonna wanna stick around and see these? I have some really cool things in store, so let's go. All right, humanoids, before we get started, here is your DM question to answer in the comments down below. Now, seriously, answer these, because I want this video to be a great resource for DMs coming into Dungeons and & Dragons, and maybe even veteran DMs looking for a way to save some time, some money, and some sanity. So even if you think that you don't have anything to add, I promise you do, or you think, ah, everybody uses that. No, they don't. Make sure you leave it in the comments below. Help a DM out, okay? So, here's your question. What is your number one dungeon master tool that you couldn't DM without? So leave that in the comments down below. I'm super excited to get some new resources from the comments. All right, so let's start with my Dungeon Master resources I couldn't think of DMing without. And the first one is Static Clings. Now, this one, I've been actually surprised how few people know that you can get battle map Static Clings. Like, these are essentially, um, reusable stickers for your battle map. So you put out your battle map and it's blank, right? You draw on there what you want your battle to look like and then you kind of have to make these terrible drawings of where things are and what they're supposed to be. Well, you don't have to anymore because these static clings you can literally just peel off of here and stick onto your battle map wherever you want to use it. After you're done with it, you peel them back off, you put them back on your page, and you keep them in your binding. That's what I do because they lay flat and I've got a whole bunch of pages here of different things that I can add to my dungeons and this has saved me a whole bunch of time drawing terrible images on maps but also a whole bunch of money because I don't have to make a custom map for every single encounter. I can use my rollout mat and I can use these static Klingons to make it look super cool and my players have a much better idea of what is happening in the dungeon. Dungeon. And you can even use these on TV screens. So if you use maps uh, on your TV, you can still use these because they're static clings. They're not going to hurt your TV. So that's my first one that I love that has saved me so much time and money that I like to keep in my DM binder. The second one, which I'm really surprised is actually kind of controversial. Uh, my previous video, uh, I, I realized that some people don't consider these real, but um, I think that I think they are. And that is paper miniatures. Okay, going back to old school D&D &D where you had paper miniatures that you could cut out and use, these are from printableheroes.com where you can get free, yep, free paper miniatures that you just download, print, cut out, glue together, and boom, you have beautiful, amazing miniatures for your table. Now that's not the only reason I love these. I mean, free is a big reason, don't get me wrong. Free is a big reason I love this. But I also love it because they save so much storage. I mean, who gonna like buy tons of storage boxes for your miniatures? I, I know a lot of people do. I have boxes of miniatures, but it, I, I, I hate digging through them. It's hard to organize them, right? These, you just fold the base flat. You can stick them in uh, one of those laminated uh, folders, so the little clear ones. You can write on the folder cover what, uh, ki what type of monster they are. You can label them. Oh, I know this is sounding so nerdy, but I'm getting so excited. You can label them the, with the type of monster, the type of terrain, and literally as your players are going through your world, if you want a surprise encounter, you can flip to that section of your binder, pull out your monster, and set it on your table, and boom, you have amazing miniatures all in one binder. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. And it saved me so much money. 
Who gonna spend a lot of money on miniatures if you try to buy miniatures for every session and every campaign? It's gonna be a lot. So these have been such a money, time, and sanity saver for me. I highly recommend it. Printable Heroes also has a Patreon, which I highly recommend that you support. Best dollar a month that you're ever gonna spend. I promise. So that is number two. Number three, uh, who gonna wanna pay attention here, um, because this one's a little weirder, but I promise I, I could not DM without this next one, and that is pipe cleaners. <laughs> I know it's kind of a weird one, but these Dollar Tree pipe cleaners, just the variety pack of all the different colors, have saved me so much time and money. And that's because I actually use these for condition, rings, and spell effects. So I just wrap them around my hand like that, seal it off, and there you have it. I have a condition ring. Is it the prettiest thing in the world? Nope, but it does the job and that's what matters. You can use these for hunter's mark, you can use these for any condition. You, because they come in so many colors, you can actually assign colors for each one of the conditions if you want. So blinded, poisoned, uh, paralyzed, things like that. You can have a different color for them. You can make a whole bunch of these ahead of time. Again, put them in your binder and just pull them out when you want them. Or you can leave them like this to do whatever you need with them. You can also use these for things like fireball. You can take the red one, make a big circle for fireball. You can, because uh, these are pipe cleaners, you can bend them into whatever shape you want. So you can do cubes with them. Wow, that's a terrible cube. You can do cones with them. <laughs> it looks more like a cone than a cube. So you can do cones with them uh, to show your spell area of effect. And no, they're not as fancy as the little uh, plastic condition rings or the um, plastic um, spell area of effects, but they are a whole lot cheaper and a whole lot more versatile. Um, you can use these for anything. So I love having these on hand to just grab and use for whatever I need them for. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't do them without these and they're so cheap. They've saved me so much money. I, I guarantee you'll want these. Who going to be really excited about this one? Cause it's popsicle sticks. This is my giant box of one thousand popsicle sticks that I got on sale for $5.99. And I have used these for so many things. So many things. I have a whole video if you're interested on how to make like 10 minute crafts for d d with popsicle sticks. I've got a whole video on that. Um, but some of the things that I've made with these are walls. So if you're doing a goblin fortress or uh, you just want like city walls, I've made these city walls out of popsicle sticks. They look so cool. And all this is is popsicle sticks, hot glue, and a little bit of paint. That's all that I did to those. And wow, do they look cool. Love those. My next one and probably my most useful one is actually flight stands. So I made these flight stands um, cause I saw the plastic ones and I just couldn't bring myself to actually buy them. Uh, I was like, I wonder if I can make that and make it. I did. And I use these all the time. Underwater combat, fly, like my wizards with fly spells, my enemies, um, that have fly. Like I use these all the time. You can make varying heights depending on what you need. And uh, these are so, so useful. And it's just a couple of popsicle sticks and some hot glue. That's it. And then, of course, one of my favorites is that you can make these cute little vendor stands uh, out of popsicle sticks and a little bit of fabric, also from the dollar store. So uh, I, I really, really love popsicle sticks because I really love crafting and it saves me a ton of money on terrain, on buying uh, different things for my maps. I can just make them out of these popsicle sticks and hot glue. And it's great and I couldn't imagine DMing without my trusty popsicle sticks. And then the very last one is this one, this one saves me more time and sanity than money because I actually did have to spend some money on this, but it was so worth it. And that is cards. 
I love using cards in my D&D campaigns, uh, mostly because it saves my sanity and um, my well of ingenuity. <laughs> Who gonna spend a lot of energy coming up with what's on this random dead body that my players want to loot? Uh, I want to give them a magical item. What magical item do I want to give? They rolled a critical fail or a critical success. What interesting thing do I want to happen? <sighs> Just thinking about it makes me tired because we spend a lot of energy thinking of those things. Energy that we could be spending on NPC interactions or role playing. So buying decks of cards like this is a total sanity saver. You buy this deck of cards here and this is 250 magical items. They have this gorgeous art on the front so your players know what it looks like. And then on the back, you have uh, everything about that magical item and the effects of it, which is super cool. So what I do is I give these cards to my players for them to stick in their binder or their folder so that they know exactly what their magical item does. No more having to wait 10 minutes while your player tries to take notes on what their new magical item does, uh, only to lose those seriously five minutes later <laughs> or continue to ask questions. You literally just give them a card and you're done, which is a great sanity saver. It's the same thing with my loot cards. These are homemade and are actually coming to my Patreon very, very soon. I promise. It's been a big project, but we will have these very soon. And I love them because they're always the same categories and I just fill out those categories. And when a player says I loot this random body, they can literally just draw a card and they have what would be on that body as well as some interesting items that could possibly lead to some little side quest thing if they want it to be. Uh, I don't have all those side quests mapped out. I'm relying on my ingenuity in those moments. But um, these are really handy to have. They save me a lot of time, a lot of sanity. And then finally, I have my critical fails and my critical hit cards. So if my players critically fail or are critically hit by an enemy, then I can choose one of these cards at random and choose one of the effects off of them. And it creates some really fun moments or some really scary, awful moments, depending on which card that I pick, which I love the randomness of it. I may not use them all the time, but I definitely love having them on hand and love having the option there. And oh boy, do my players freak out when I pull one of these cards and give them the DM stare. <laughs> oh, love, is love the right word? I don't know if love is the right word, but they're definitely memorable. They're very memorable. When I DM, I rely on these five things a whole heck of a lot. And I certainly hope that you got a lot of ideas on uh, tools that you could use as well that would save you some time, some money, and some sanity. And I certainly hope that they help to give your game advantage. And until next time, my friends, may your game have advantage. Halfling Hannah here, signing out.